Hello and welcome to the new episode of the Cisco Packet Tracer and Network Tutorial for Beginners. Siawash is here and today I want to talk about the trunking protocol as well as different switch port mode on the switch interface. In last video you learned how to create a different VLAN on one switch. In today's scenario we've got two switches, switches number one and switch number two and three different VLANs are created on each switch and computer are connected to the switches. Let's verify that. I click on the switch number one, enable the switch and using the show VLAN command to see which VLANs are created on my switch. VLAN number 10, 20 and 30 plus the native VLAN VLAN number one are created on this switch. Let's check the other switch. Okay. Enter, enable the switch and using the show VLAN again and VLAN number 10 IT, VLAN number 20 sales and VLAN number 30 R&D are created on this switch as well. To communicate to one PC from one switch, let's say PC 0 from VLAN 10 to other PC and other switch, PC number 4, VLAN 10, switch number 2, we should provide a special link between our switches. According to the Cisco terminology, a trunk is an interface or link that can carry frames for multiple VLANs at once. A trunk can connect two switches so that devices in VLANs on one switch, PC number zero, can communicate with devices in the same VLANs on another switch. See these two PC or these two PC are in the same VLAN in different switches. Let's take a look at this picture. As you can see, switch number one, all the three VLANs plus native VLAN, and the switch number two, three VLANs as well as the native VLAN. Computers are connected to the access ports and a special link, which is Cisco name it strong can carry the information of all VLANs between these two switches. There are two different flavors for trunking protocol. First of all, the ISL or inter-switch link, which is the Cisco proprietary protocol for the interconnected of multiple switches and maintenance of the VLAN information as the traffic goes between switches. The, to add the VLAN information to a frame to be sent over the trunk, actually the ISL encapsulates the entire frame within a new frame. Look at this picture, it is very clear. This is our original frame and the ISL at a new header and the new CRC at the end of the frame. The new header in a header of the uh, Ethernet frame contains different information, includes the VLAN IDs, so ISL use the new frame technology to carry the VLAN information. In other hand, there is an IEEE standard 802.1Q, which is a tagging protocol. In this method, actually the take a different approach to VLAN tagging. Instead of adding more headers, to a frame 802.1Q inserts data into existing header. As you can see, an additional 4 byte tag fields, which is include the VLAN ID and other information related to the VLANs, tag uh, inserted between the source address and the type length field. And because the 802.1Q has altered the frame, the FCS of the frame is altered to reflect the change. So these are the two different flavors of our uh, trunking protocol, but uh, most students ask which protocol to use. Oh, Cisco developed the ISL, so in environment you're using the, all the switches in the same brand Cisco, uh, um, you can use either protocols. and the choice is not important really. Uh, when you're trucking between the different Cisco switches, there is no real benefit of using 
one protocol over the other except that uh, remember that uh, 802.1q can support 4096 VLANs whereas ISL can only support 1000 VLANs but in the environment you use the mix brand switches like a Cisco as a core and uh, different switches as a other layers and especially the X layer you should follow the IEEE standard and you've got one options 802.1q even the newer Cisco switches also only support the IEEE standards so let's come back to our scenario here different VLANs and let's create the trunk port I click on switch number one go to global config mode and going to the interface fast Ethernet 01 but before that I want to show the current information and the switch port mode of the interface to do that you can use the show interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 and add the keyword switch port as you can see different information are here includes a name switch status and so on but which is important for us in this tutorial is the administrative mode and operation mode of the interface as you can see by default the administrative mode is a dynamic auto and uh, Cisco devices um, config with this configuration and they form the interface characteristic based on the another protocol which is a dynamic trunking protocol this protocol attempts to determine which trunking protocol are supported on each side to establish a trunk, if possible. Let's explain like this. Before that, I'm going to the switch number two and double check the interface status A0 slash one. I connect these two switches via the fast Ethernet 0 slash one. And you can see the other side is also administrative mode is a dynamic auto and the operation mode is static access. Let's create the trunk on a first switch. Go back here, configuration mode and interface fat Ethernet 0 slash 1. And the command is this switch port mode and question mark. You can see different options access which is useful when you connected the end device to the switch like a PC host those kind of machines you should define the access port trunk port as mentioned is a communicate between two switches as uplink and can carry the different VLAN information over the trunk and finally the dynamic let's take a look at dynamic and question mark we've got two different dynamic mode one of them is auto and the other one the desirable in desirable mode let's start with this the second one first the DTB packet is automatically trunking protocol protocol I talk is continuously sent to the other side and if find the auto or desirable port can make and form the trunk between two switches the auto is not uh, create the trunk based on the DTP request from the neighbor switch but is not continuously attempt to become a trunk and in this scenario we want this trunk this interface be a trunk and in a trunk actually is no matter what is the other side it's create the trunk in the one side and let's waiting the packet tracer start the communication between these two and I go and check the status of the switch port again and as you can see because one side is became trunk the operation mode is changed to the trunk previously let's go up previously it was access which means when you create the one side as a trunk the other side because in a dynamic auto mode create the form but it's uh, not a very good practice I recommend that as a network administrator you hard code what type of interface you want to have on your interfaces so I'm going uh, interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 and switch port mode trunk and now if we check the show interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 switch port mode you can see 
property, our administrative mode is also changed to the trunk. And now we have trunk between our switches, which can carry the information of all different VLANs on our networks. But remember, except uh, the VLAN native VLAN, which is usually VLAN 1, the other VLANs is tagged based on this communication. Unfortunately, on these switches, I don't have the setting for the trunking encapsulation. As you can see, the switch for trunk encapsulation is not here, but I want to show you how you can change the different trunking protocol. For To do this, I select the switch, goes to the one multi-layer switch, drag on the screen to just show you how you can set the trunking protocol but unfortunately the Cisco packet tracer only support uh, the standard one 802.1.2.q and go to the CLI enter interface comp interface passage in a 0 slash 1 and you can see when I choose the switchboard trunk I got the encapsulation and in a real world and the high-end switches, um, if the Cisco devices support, you can see the you can have an ISL or dot one Q. This is how you can set the trunking protocol. However, we don't have any work with this multi-layer switch, so goodbye. Now our trunk is ready, and let's create the access port. I connect VLAN 10 to the number interface number 10. VLAN 20 interface number 15 and VLAN 30 interface number 20 on each switch. So let's create that. Okay, interface pass Ethernet 0 slash. So go to the con global config mode. Interface FA0 slash 10. Switch port mode this time is access because it's connected to the end user and switch port mode switch port mode access VLAN 10 exit interface pass internet slash 15 switch port mode access and switch port access VLAN 20 and interface pass VLAN slash 20 sorry 20 and switch port mode Access, switch port, access, VLAN 30. Now you can let's check the show interface passes and it's 10, switch port mode, and then you can see this interface is administrative mode is static access, operation mode is static access, and access mode VLAN is VLAN 10. Let's check the trunk port, show interface passes and is slash one, switch port mode, and as you can see, this is a trunking native mode, is a VLAN 10 and can accept the VLAN 1. This trunk will tag the all other information of the other VLANs. I pause the video and do the same thing for the access interface on the other switch. Okay, let's come back. Uh, during the I pause the video, I define the access port on this switch as well, and IP address are set also. As you can see, the VLAN 10 is IP address 10 10 10 0 0 1 and 10 0 0 2 in the other side. Let's test the ping. Go to the command prompt and ping the 10 0 0 2, the other PC in other switch, and I can successfully ping the other side and let's check with the packet tracer also VLAN 30 to VLAN 30 successfully which means that our trunk is working properly and we can have a different communication between our VLANs in this scenario. I hope this is informative for you and Please uh, check other videos. Um, next session, I want to talk about the VTP because, as you can see, it's a very difficult in the environment. You got different switches, create a bunch of the VLANs on each switch manually. Uh, please like our Facebook page as well as subscribe on our YouTube page. Thank you and see you soon.